there. Yeah, that's okay. Perfect. Thank you. Is that for you? Yeah. Thank you. It's in Hebrew, but I'm going to read it together, right. so don't worry about it. Okay, I'm reading it. Just two? Tonight's show is a little nishmat, uh, a dear friend of ours, a member of our kollel for over five years, Baruch uh, Hashem. Eli, Khan, Arab uh, Shalom. It's really hard to think about a person who was sitting right here <laughs> two weeks ago, a week ago, whenever it was, uh, and uh, just today is uh, somewhere else, but it's the Shema Shal Halyan Gan Eden, it should be a Militio Shal, it should say good things for us. Amen. 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 אמרכם הכל באותיו ייחוס ויחמוד ויחם הנפש רוח ושמה אשר הנפטר בשעתו מן העולם אליעזר בן אברהם רוח אדוני תנחנו בגן אלה הוא וכל בני ישראל השוכבים בו בכלל החמים וסליחות וכן ירצון ולומר אמן I originally planned to give the shiur at the Shiva house uh, but being that the hour is very late and there are a lot of grandkids that are staying right. not in bedrooms but in, in like the actual living we room we figured we didn't want to um, uh, upset anybody's sleep so we decided to do it here <laughs> yeah. Shmat, and we're broadcasting it live for whoever wants to hear uh, from elsewhere because it was going to be in the Shiva house, I had to be very careful that it could be the kind of Torah that a mourner could study. Meaning we couldn't teach our regular Shulchan Aruch because uh, it would be a problem uh, to teach that in front of people who couldn't study it. And now let's say that I'm, I'm not so strict about studying other things in a Shiva house, but there are people who are very particular about it. Um, and I figured we could study something that has to do with mourning. Uh, and perhaps a more positive uh, side of, of that. There's a big question that I get asked a lot, and I, in fact, today I was in Los Angeles in the morning, and we had a meeting in our Bedin about, uh, in general, what, what guidelines do we have in place for somebody who converts to Judaism, mm -hmm. and their need to mourn over parents, God forbid, or, or siblings, or somebody who is in the family who's not Jewish, mm -hmm. uh, how does mourning go? And uh, the, the first thing that we had to deal with in that uh, yeshiva, in that meeting, is the sensitivities that have to be put into play. Just because somebody today is Jewish doesn't mean that their parents are not their parents. Yes, halacha may say that a person who is born is like, a person who converts is like one who is born, but it doesn't mean that they're a person who is born. They're like a person who is born. If there's the new life inside of them. It doesn't mean that we reject and we throw away everything that was. It's very important, very very particular to, to, to zoom in on that and to make that very clear. There are halachot. For example, uh, a brother and a sister who convert to Judaism technically are not related anymore. Can they get married to each other? No. Not I'm not going to ask. Else. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Don't ask them. Oh. say no. Why? <laughs> so people shouldn't say, oh. that they came from a very good level of holiness where brothers and sisters don't get married. Now that they're Jewish, look, they do an ugly thing like brothers and sisters getting married. Oh. So it's, it's a very, really. It's not a maritayin. It's, it's a, it's a halakha. In order so that people shouldn't say something. This is not a maritainish, this is a real halachic issue. Mm -hmm. That people shouldn't say, look, when they weren't Jewish, look how much they cared about their parents. Look how much they cared about their family. Uh, now somebody's Jewish, look how he throws us in the waste bin. This attitude, somebody has to be very careful about this. Uh, and this is a question that we dealt with today. And that is that our protocol is like anyone else. The person wants to say Shiva, the person wants to say Kaddish, what? Uh, to the contrary, Chamor Yosef says, that if anybody can uplift that neshama, it's the Jewish descendant that can say Kaddish. It's that person who knows how to connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu properly that can give any kind of nachat to that soul. And uh, it's a very different mentality than what you might hear on the street. Uh, but that's why or we don't study community. Torah from the street, right? We study Torah yeah. from books. Well, we, we talked about that case of someone who was in a community yeah. where mourning his mother know. was not really permissible and that had to hide his feelings. You Correct. Know, that was like, and so why does this come up to me about Eli? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what the, why this comes up to me about Eli. Uh, Eli Bokhashan was Jewish, so what's the point of this conversation? Right. Because Eli uh, fulfilled, at least in my eyes, what it says in the Talmud, You should accept every person 
with a smiling face. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rabbi Yochanan says about himself that he would st- be the first one to... Everything was Rabbi Yochanan. Don't hold me to it. Nobody ever said hello to me in the street before I could say hello to them. Even a person who was an idol worshiper. I always said hello first. Eli reminded me of that. Wherever he went, whoever he was, whatever situation he was in, he always said hello first. He always smiled first. He always... I never saw him sitting here grumpy, upset, angry, fighting with somebody. A uh, very different, a very different approach. It's something that's very refreshing in the world we live in today. Uh, so, Yosef has a famous question, a, a letter of his, which he's asked an interesting question. This is found if you look in the top in Hebrews, Chavod Yosef, Shut Yabi Omer, in his questions and answers Yabi Omer. This is the tenth volume. Uh, this is uh, the kind of book that it's not a book you could find somewhere else. It's not like, you know, he did another version of someone else's book. This is uh, 10 volumes of novel halachic insight in the tiniest little writing you could fit inside of a book uh, because it really needs a lot of uh, papers. People ask him questions that nobody else really asked before or somebody asked before and he felt there was a different answer. And Chaum Yosef's expertise is to answer back with as many sources as you possibly can. In fact, I once went to Rabbi's house, who doesn't follow the writings of Chalmud Yosef. And I said, why do you have all his books here? He said, I'll be honest, I use it like an encyclopedia. When I need to know an issue, I look, what does Rabbi Bar Yosef say? And if he doesn't quote a book, it's because that book didn't exist. <laughs> it's a very interesting attitude to have. But that's, uh... <laughs> so here, Chalmud Yosef has asked this question, in Yabi Omer, in the 10th volume, in uh, question 55, in Yoreda. She'ena, you see the bold, She'ena? Chayal Tzahal Druzi. A uh, Tzahal soldier, a soldier in the Israeli Defense Forces, mm-hmm. who's a Druzi. What is a Druzi? Druze. Druze. What are Druze? Who are Druze? They're better with Druze, Druze are, religion, yes. they're they're are their own religion. It's a very interesting religion because it's a religion that the people in the religion don't know so much about. Mm. It's a religion that is meant for priests, for the people who are uh, in charge of that religion. Um, but they are people who love Israel, that go to the army, that are in our police force. In fact, if you remember, in Harnof there was a that massacre in the synagogue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The police officer that stopped that massacre and was killed there Druze, was yeah. a Druze officer. He wasn't, an, he wasn't a police officer like you think. He was a traffic cop. And he was going car to car giving tickets. And he heard something going on. He put his life on the line, literally from his life. Uh, so they might not be Jewish, but they're definitely proud citizens of the state of Israel. But they consider, uh, we're not, uh, they're Arabim? No, Semites. Uh, they're Semites, for sure, but I don't, I don't think the Arabs consider them uh, Muslims, for sure not, and I don't think they consider themselves Muslims like the other Arabs in Israel. Mm-hmm. Who was murdered at the hands of uh, Arabs, Yishmaelim, al mishmeret bitachon Israel, while they were protecting the security of the state of Israel. Can we say the Hashkava prayer in the synagogue in order to uplift his soul? The Hashkava is the mm-hmm. Sephardic mm-hmm. version of the El Malay yeah, Chamin. Yeah. Uh, Yiskor prayer. Mm-hmm. Can we in the synagogue say a prayer to uplift his neshama? This is the question. So he's a Jew soldier who served in the Israeli army, who was killed protecting the state of Israel. And we want to know because he's not Jewish. Not only he's not Jewish, he's not part of our faith at all. Meaning he's not. A, a, it's not like he was an atheist or he was a believer in Hashem, but he was trying to become Jewish. He wasn't Jewish at all. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can we say a prayer in the Beth Knesset in order to uplift his soul? I would say yes. Well, I would say yes. Well, it's clearly... Yeah. Clearly yeah. this was the kind of question that made him have to give an answer because clearly there was a case or a situation where people were not so comfortable with that. Lots of no's. And I can imagine that there are many synagogues that you could still find today that if you walk inside and say, hey, can you say a hashkava and el malay al-chamim for somebody who's not Jewish? I'm sure that you'll find at least a synagogue somewhere that will tell you no. So this letter here is meant to address, even though it's addressing a specific point, it's really meant to address a much larger issue of, can I say, an ashkava for somebody who is not Jewish? But he's not not, not Jewish. He actually was very supportive, uh, and he g- gave his life for, for the Jewish state, for the Jewish people. So it's different than somebody who's just, somebody who's at the, at the corner grocery store that has nothing to do with that. 
Well, isn't there a separate status? Correct, that's correct. And that's I guess that's why they're choosing this specific case. Isn't there a specific status for someone who does a Kiddush Hashem, no matter what their origin is? We'd have to find a source for it. That's, what, yeah, that's essentially what this letter is setting that, out to that do. That will go with the same thing that uh, a lot of the non-Jews that saved uh, people like during the Holocaust. Us. Right. Yeah. <coughs> So, well, this question will come up in that context as well. What's going to be at the root of this question? It's an issue we've discussed here before. Now, he's not going to get into it because to Rechel Yosef, this is obvious. He's a but, soul. Oh, but that's the question, essentially. Here. Yes. You have, unfortunately, and I made a movie about this not so long ago. You can go on our YouTube channel and find it out. There are some uh, crazy people in the world that are uh, preaching a very radical form of uh, Jewish mysticism oh, yeah. um, in which they're teaching that Jews have souls and non-Jews don't. At least not the same kind of soul that a Jew has. Now, this is a very mainstream group. It's all over the world. Uh, this is unfortunately a very mainstream teaching. Um, not of Judaism, but of this particular Jewish group. Uh, who likes to speak a lot in the name of Judaism? Um, and therefore, it's important, like I mentioned there, that we don't believe in such a... such a. Even if there was going to be some Kabbalistic uh, difference... Angel, do you mind closing the door, please? If there was going to be some Kabbalistic difference between... Uh, one soul and another soul, it would have zero practical ramifications in real life. Meaning, uh, it could be that the Mekubalim say this and say that, but it really doesn't make a difference to us in terms of how you treat um, another person. Come, take close. Tshuva, so here he has an answer. Hadruzim, <coughs> the Druze, ma'aminim be'el echad. They believe in one God. Venam ovdim avoda zara klal. And they do not worship idols at all. They are not idol worshippers. They are not just believers in Hashem, but even their religion, which we might not believe is a religion that we would observe, but their religion is not one of idol worship at all. They also believe in the eternity of the soul. And this is a key element, you should know. Our rabbi tells us that somebody who doesn't believe in the world to come doesn't have a portion of the world to come. And this idea is that, listen, you want to believe, <laughs> you want to be there when Mashiach comes, you want to be there with Khatim the resurrection of the dead. You have to believe in it. If you don't believe in it, you kind of opt out of that option. But I thought we're, again, I'm just saying, just clarifying, that, that we're not a people of belief, that we're also people of action. Correct, but belief is important. Knowledge. Belief is important, but we also have concrete aspects that, that we, so how we know that there's a world to come. Correct. I'm going to tell you where we get this idea from. There's a... I've stressed many times here that we're not Orthodox Jews. Um, because Orthodoxy is a fabrication. It's a false, it's a false uh, understanding of Judaism. Uh, Mari, we are Torah Jews. We have a Torah. We have Chachamim, our rabbis who guided us along the generations. And then when Judaism started to break up into different denominations, we decided we're Orthodox. Orthodox Judaism is a reactionary Judaism to other kinds of Judaism. And mm-hmm. just like uh, we've reacted to Christianity, we've reacted to Reform, we've reacted to Conservative, and there are also there are times where you'll find a, a rabbi will say, you know, we really could do this, but because the Reform people do it, we don't do it. What kind of halachic answer is that? Mm. What, is that what, what, what does that mean? If it's a right or is it wrong, who cares who does it? Yeah. But this is a real issue in today's Judaism. It's, a, it's a, because people are Orthodox. So we don't have that illness of being Orthodox. And uh, our attitude is, if it's true, it's true. The problem is that in order to counteract other theologies or other philosophies, many people have felt that they have to go all out and uh, be the exact opposite. So because there are religions that surround us that don't believe in doing any actions, doing any mitzvot, they only believe in beliefs, um, we Jews have decided that Judaism is not about belief, it's about action. That's about as true as saying that Judaism is only about belief and not about action. <laughs> Judaism is about both. The fact that if there's a person who acts but doesn't believe properly, they're just as bad as the person who believes and doesn't act properly. Mm-hmm. To us, one, they're, they're not just you need some and of the other. You need both. And without both, it's not there. And therefore, uh, you could have a person, two people do the same crime in Shabbat, the same violation of Shabbat. One intended to do it, and one did not intend to do it. And so they're treated very differently. But what do you mean? I, we did the same exact thing. It doesn't make a difference. You're two very different people. And so I think that, uh, and the Rambam, essentially, he tries to codify these kind of beliefs, which some people struggle with. But the Rambam tries to codify Jude- Jewish belief into 13 
principles. And if one doesn't believe in these 13 one even one of the 13 principles, but he keeps all the mitzvot of the Torah, says the Rambam, he's not one of us. He's not Jewish. That's a very harsh thing to say, which is why not everyone jumped onto the Rambam's bandwagon. But clearly he felt that belief is a crucial part of, of being Jewish. So, hashrat nefesh when you hear about a religion that believes in the eternity of the soul, we gave a class about this, by the way, in Kuzari, if you remember, the argument of the Rambam and the Ramban is about, does the soul, what does it mean, the eternity of the soul? What, what is that actually? And we heard some pretty interesting things that we didn't think would come out of the Jewish world uh, in that class. But let's say on a very simple level, the Jewish religion does believe the soul lives on. Vlod, and not only that, they draft to the Israeli Defense Forces. And they literally put their lives on the line in the second paragraph. They put their lives on the line to protect the citizens of the state of Israel. And they are observant of the seven Noahide laws. But not knowingly. Uh, okay, fine. That's correct. And therefore their halachic status are like righteous Gentiles. Now here... This is something very important. I just want to take a side track for a second. That is, <coughs> when we talk about the Sephardic Chachamim being Zionists, that this is the kind of Zionist which a Sephardic Chacham is. There is inherent value in being a non-Jew who drafts the Israeli army, like a Jew who drafts the Israeli army. Um, it's not out of some radical, uh, uh, isolated Zionism. It's part of what he views to be a wholesome Jewish life, is to be part of what happens in the state of Israel. It's for that reason also that Chacham of Yosef, and as you'll see in his personality, is not one who got stuck on every Israeli citizen must draft an army. Rather, he also believed that there were other ways to, to help the Jewish people. And you can argue whether those ways are correct or not. But you might not put Rabbi Bar Yosef in the staunch Zionist camp. But that doesn't take away from him his, his valuing the service of the Israeli army as not just something nice that he does for Jews, but as a fundamental of, of being part of the Jewish people. <coughs> Rabbi Yosef uses this later in his history, uh, when the Israeli army conversions are challenged by the Ashkenazi authorities. Uh, the uh, to be specific, the Lithuanian Ashkenazi authorities. Um, Rabbi Yosef says, listen, who cares what they say? But the bottom line is that these are people that are willing to put their lives on the line for the Jewish people, and that counts for something in the realm of conversion. And that's one of the questions Hanuk says, would you be willing to die if the Jewish people were being killed today? And they're obviously saying yes. And therefore that's something that he says they're doing. And even though many people around the world when they convert will say such a thing, but how many people are actually putting their life on the line for the Jewish people if not for these soldiers that are serving the state of Israel? So he sees halachic value in that, which is something you will not find in many other texts and many other books. And then he says, "Vayen besever Chasidim." Look in the book of Chasidim. Who wrote Sefer Chasidim? Mm. Rabbi Yehuda Chasid was his name. He was one of the giants <laughs> of Ashkenaz. These are not the Chasidim like you think with fuzzy hats. There was before these Chasidim, there were another group of Chasidim, the medieval Chasidim. Mm -hmm. And then before those Chasidim, there were the Chasidim of the times of the Talmud and Mishnah. Those are different group of Chasidim. This is talking about the second group of Hasidim. If you remember in the old city, there's a synagogue that had a leftover arch that, was, mm -hmm. that blew up and then they rebuilt it, the Churba synagogue. Mm -hmm. This was his synagogue. Mm -hmm. Shekatav, he writes, Nochri sha'asa tovot l'Israel. A non-Jew who was kind, did good to Israel, to the Jewish people. Nicholim la'asot o hashkava. It's permissible to do a hashkava for him. Ulvakesh ma'akadosh b'chu she'akel b'dino and to ask Hashem to ease his judgment in the next world. The Talmud already says in the Yerushalmi, I made him bold all the sources that he quotes. And one, compared to Rabbi Yosef's other letters, this is very short, but look at the number of names and, and books he's quoted. Amu hmm. Yerushalmi, they already said in the Yerushalmi, Talmud Yerushalmi, Masechet Megidah, Shomrim al Kharvona Zachul Atov. That we say about Kharvona in the story of Purim, we say, Vegam Kharvona Zachul Atov. Also, Chavona, he should be remembered for the good. Why? Because he spoke bad about Haman who hated the Jewish people. Ayin Sham, go look there. He says, go look also in Sevech Hasidim, somewhere else where he says something similar. Listen to what he says. If Chavona, we say about him a blessed memory, 
And he didn't do anything good for the Jews. He simply said something bad about the enemy of the Jews. Mm. Yeah? The Koshuk and Chaylim Druzim, how much more so Drew soldiers, Asher Samim Nafsham Bechapam Lagen Lam Israel, who literally put their lives on the line to protect the Jewish people. It's a mitzvah. Not it's allowed to. It's a mitzvah to pray for them to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to ease their judgment in the next world. And his kindness is on all his creations. No, we tell us about Uziel saying that everybody has a neshama, that everybody was created. And then we were thinking, so what are the practical ramifications of that? This kind of letter, even though he's not going to quote Rav Uziel in this letter, but this attitude that exists among Chachmei Svan is what makes this unique. It's an attitude of a, a Torah of, of universality. Yes, I am Jewish. Yes, I'm proud to be Jewish. Yes, I believe that Jews and non-Jews are different. But that doesn't take away my ability to pray for somebody who's not part of my faith. That doesn't take away my ability to have Rachmanut, to give thanks, to pray to HaKadosh Baruch for them. We're part of the same people, the same earth. His kindness is on all his creations, not just on Jews. Are we not or Lagoim? Correct. This is more than Orla Goyim. This is that's being a light unto the nations. This is being part of the nations. To take, to own it, Jews are also part of humanity. We're not just the lighthouse right, to humanity. Right, right. We're also in humanity. Right, right, right. I think a lot of us forget this. When we always look as the lighthouse, it comes out very patronizingly. Like, you know, we're here to, to look after you. No, we're also part of you. We hurt like you, we bleed like you, we cry like you. This is part of where we are in the world. It's very different than just putting ourselves on a pedestal and saying, you know, let's shine our light on you. Let's allow you to bask in our glory. You know, this is, a, this is something a little, it's a little different. Uh, Go look in the writings of Rabbi Yitzchak Atiyah. Rabbi Yitzchak Atiyah is one of the rabbis of Syria. All the Atiyah, and I don't know all of these rabbis in detail, which one was where in which generation. All of the Atiyahs are part of the same family. They're even Rabbi Atiyah here in San Diego, this is part of his family. If you, if you go to his house, he'll have this name in his family tree, which was hanging in his house. Uh, in his book, Rov Dagan. By the way, and how is Atiyah connected to Chacham Yosef? Rabbi Bar Yosef's rabbi was named Chacham Ezra Atiyah. Mm-hmm. Chacham Ezra Atiyah was the Rosh Yeshiva in Yeshiva Puat Yosef of the Sephardim in Jerusalem. Who studied by Chacham Ezra Atiyah? Rabbi Bar Yosef, Rabbi Mordechai Eliyahu, Rabbi Yitzchak Kaduri, uh, Rabbi Chaim David Halevi. A number of the rabbis that you're familiar with are all students of the same Chacham of Peretz, studied for a period under Chacham Ezra Atiyah. Maybe not for so long, but for a short period. So this is a common uh, denominator in the Sephardic world, is Chama Zaratiyah, and he is directly related to whoever we're going to mention in the story. In his book, Rov Dagan, which is the, in the end of a pamphlet called Ot Tova, Shumutar Litpale L'Rfu'a Shlema Al Goy Chole, that it's permitted to pray for a complete healing for a sick person who's not Jewish, Asher Hu Michasdei Yomot Olam, who's from the righteous of the world, Kashem Shamu Chazal, like a rabbi say in Masech Gitin, that we support financially non-Jewish poor people with Jewish poor people in order to further peace among us. Now, Rav Chaim David Halevi, very interestingly, says that he wants to take away that last sentence. That in today's generation, we've reached a place where there are populations of non-Jews that not only do not hate us, but we get along with them, Baruch Hashem. And our desire to be mefarnes them, to take care of their poor, is not just because we want to make peace. We want to show, look, we also take care of you just like we take care of ourselves. But because of a basic human belief that we all should take care of each other. Mm-hmm. But this is uh, before Rabbi Chaim Devi Halevi's times. V'efshach shechiyuv hu lasot kem. Mi pleid He says, and actually it could even be an obligation to go pray for somebody who's not Jewish, who's a righteous person. Uma gamim titkabed filato. He said, how much, how incredible would it be if his tefillah is accepted by Hashem? It will become a, a time that Hashem listens. The sick person will become healed. And then he will sanctify Hashem's name in public. And a number of the giants of the Jewish people did this. And their tefillah was accepted. Because Masech Yivamot says that Hashem loves the prayers of the righteous. Now we're in the second paragraph on the left hand side. V'siyem. This year, that first word. Shaharav mm-hmm. Hagadol, and he finished after the great Rabbi Moreno Harav Eliyahu Katsin. That's the same Syrian family as my Rabbi, Rabbi Shlomo Katsin. He's also Syrian. Yeah. He backed him up with a proof from the story of Elisha the prophet. 
Esheripat Naaman Mitzarato. Remember, he heals Naaman from his uh, skin affliction. And then, because of that, Nasa, uh, Naaman becomes a Ger Toshav, becomes a citizen of the Jewish people. Because he was healed of Torah. Because Tzara. he was healed. Very good. Very good. Very good. How much more so now? Shanachnu begalut, we're in exile, uskukim nechasdei umot haolam. And we are really dependent on the kindness of the non-Jews around us. Meaning, if we want to foster good relations, we have to show that we really care. V'osif sheken ba ma'asel yidei mor aviv, harav agadol lechasid, rabbeinu Yehuda katzin. They said this story happened to his father, the giant genius, the righteous one, Rabbi Yehuda katzin, Baal Machane Yehuda, who wrote the book Machane Yehuda. Hmm. You know, the, Syrian, the books of the Syrian rabbis were, they were hidden from us for a very long time. The right Syrian time? community is a very, um, it's not the same in Chat Yudah as Rabbi Fataya. It's a different one. Yeah, um, Mexico City. The, no, 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 the writings of the Syrian Chachamim, because the Syrian Chachamim keep to themselves and the Syrian community is kind of isolated even among yeah. the Sephardic community. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, not everyone always printed, not everyone always printed the books of the, the Chachamim properly. Today there's uh, the Sephardic Heritage Museum, I think that's what they call themselves. So. Um, that they, they've they reprinted many of the books. If you go to my house, you'll see a very light, like baby blue set of books that keeps growing. And they uh, have been printing these yeah. books, but books that haven't been in print for a very, very long time. Uh, so some of these books I have today. Shabbat Lav Goycha, there came to him one non-Jew. V'tinok mutal biyadok mo pig... Met. He came to him like a dead body. So he comes to him with a uh, baby that, that's literally dead. Ke'even mm. domem, like a solid stone. And once the rabbi started praying and blessing the baby, he woke up from his sleep. He immediately was healed. And he went from death to life. And a big kiddush Hashem was done with him. And what Maran writes, Zef, you don't mind just walking around that way. Yeah, it's okay. And what Maran writes, in the Shukhan Now here's the question. He has a real problem here. The problem is that Maran has a, a pretty crazy ruling in the Shukhan Aruch. And we actually have an interest, a similar thing where it comes to do with uh, later on in conversion we have this question. Maran writes in Shukhan Aruch that a Jewish doctor should not heal a non-Jewish patient, even if he pays him. Unless there's a fear that maybe the non-Jews will kill him because he doesn't do that. Wow. That changes the whole time. That's the Shukhan Aruch. 90% of my practice. So what happened to the doctor? Hey, slow down, slow down. Listen, slow down. We're going to get the answer. Oh, we're kidding. I know this is... Zehu rak le goi shoved avodah zara. This is only for somebody who's an active idol worshiper. Like somebody who's worshipping Baal, Pa'or, you know? Somebody who's coming in there, uh, the, all the, the gods of Egypt, he's uh, worshipping over there. Today, uh, the non-Jew is not an idol worshipper. He believes in the Kedosh Baruch Hu, And therefore, this is not applicable. It's because of this, if I'm not mistaken, he's from Istanbul, in Turkey. Uh, but he was one of the giants of Sfad. You'll see him quoted a lot in like the Ben Ishchai, in the Peliretz. Is the, uh, I wonder if the Peliretz quotes him. It could be not. For sure the Ben Ishchai. Rabbi Chaim Palaji, Bishut Chaim Biyad. Biyudi Shayelo Shutaf Goy. He tells a story about a Jew that had a non-Jewish partner. Vayaoselo Tovot. And his partner was good to him. He did good things with him. Vechala Hagoy Venafal Mishkav. And the non-Jewish partner became sick. And he really like became bedridden. I said, of course you could pray for your partner that he should have a refuah shlema. And he brought proof from that Rabbi uh, Yitzchak Atiyah that you can do such a thing. Meaning, don't worry, your partner is not an idol worshiper. He's done good for you. This is not the kind of person that you have to worry about praying for. Yeah. In the second paragraph of the third line, it says, um, you know, of course, again, the Gair, Toshev. Gair Toshev. Toshev. Does it mean... Ger Toshav is a citizen of the land of Israel who mm-hmm. worships Hashem, does not worship idols, uh-huh. has individual rights in the land of Israel, but not national rights in the land of Israel. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we need to 
What? To possess the land. He lives. He lives in this part, part of the yeah, nations that are welcome to live among it, us. But to be only. Um, it's a new trend for like messianic type people to introduce themselves as Geir Toshav. Is it? Is it? I don't know. I've never heard that before. Yeah, but a few people. They're definitely not a Geir Toshav. I mean, not in the context. Which is why I use yeah. the term Geir Toshav. So, what's the status of someone who's, no, quote a quote unquote atheist? Well, we didn't we didn't uh, conclude this show by it, so I can't give you any kind of answer for that okay. yet. Yep. And what, what's the verb from Toshav Hashem? Is it from? Yeah, the, the Toshav, oh. a citizen, someone who dwells in the land. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Because Ger is a stranger, so Toshav is what settles him. Yes. Maaseh begoyecha. There's a story about one non-Jew, Shechalav and Atalamut, who became sick and he was uh, getting close to dying. V'shalach agoy levakesh on nafsho metarav shitpale lav shitarpe. And uh, he sent, and he sent a message to the rabbi. Asked him to pray for him. And the rabbi did. And he'd dreamed that the rabbi's prayer made a commotion up in heaven. And his prayer was accepted. And a great kedushim was done. Baruch HaMekadesh Mubarabim and blessed is Hashem who sanctified his name in public. V'zotu Kushkatav Rav Mahara Palaji and this is what Rabbeinu Abraham Palaji I don't know if Rabbeinu Abraham is a descendant of Rabbeinu Palaji or an ancestor of Rabbeinu Palaji but he's one of the Palajis. B'sefer V'yimeher Abraham in his book V'yimeher Abraham B'shem Harav Binal Yitim in the name of the rabbi who wrote the book Binal Yitim שתלמידי חמים צדיקים המתפלים על החולה שיתרפא עושה תפילתם ברושם בשמיים יותר ממה שתפל החולה בעצמו. That a tzadik, who's a Torah scholar, a Torah scholar is a tzadik, when he prays for a sick person, his prayer is even more accepted in heaven than the person who prays for himself. עיין שם, ועיין עוד שם עוד תף רש דלי שתפלל גם על גוי שהוא חולה שיתרפא. And look over there that he mentions also that the tzadikim should use their prayer, the power of prayer, to pray also for a goy who's, um, who's sick. And the book Todot Menachem. Now, whenever you're going to see the name Menachem, it's very rare that that name is going to be found in the Sephardic community. Yes, it is found. There are Menachems in the Sephardic community, but it's a very rare name. Uh, yeah, there are certain names. Like, for example, the name Saadia. You're going to find a lot in the Sephardic community, especially in the Yemenite community. And you, you'll, yeah, you will find it randomly in, in Ashkenaz, but not so much. It's, there are certain names that have trends in different countries that are more popular. Makes sense. So already you see the book, Tolot Menachem, you're going to know that we're switching now countries. <laughs> and page uh, 78, Sofer al general echad. You see that word, general? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a general. general. That's not a Hebrew word. General. About a general. Shaya mufkad mitam shilton al alfei chaylin. That he was a commander in, uh, by the power of the government. Over thousands of soldiers. soldiers. He had many Jewish soldiers that were in his, under his uh, supervision. Now, this book is written in the Hasidic era, so in the last mm-hmm. 300 years. You're probably talking about Russians. You're talking, probably talking about a mandatory draft that the, the Tsar would draft Jews. Alexander Moshe Lapidot. And went to him with the two giants, Rabbi Alexander Moshe. When you see the word Lapidot, that's a Sephardic perversion of the word. You hear the last name Lapidus before? Mm-hmm. That's the name Lapidus. It's Lapidot in Hebrew. Rabbi Nachum Meharodna. And you for sure have heard of Rabbi Nachum Meharodna uh, in your Hasidic tales in your life. And they might have called him Rabbi Nachum Horodanker, Horodanker, Horodanka, uh, which means from Harodna. Mm. You heard of Rabbi Nachum? No? Okay, uh, one of those. Maybe Rav Zusha Vanapoli, Rav Nachum. Mm-hmm. There's like names that pop up. Uh, and they went to him in order to beg him. And he went to go beg this general to let the Jews out for Shabbat and holidays. Why? At least they would be able to observe Shabbat and holidays. And originally the general accepted them with a raging face. He was very upset that they bothered him. And he immediately pushed away their request. When they left, they figured they tried. And he asked one of his soldiers to go around and bring them back. And he told them, I have a single daughter. Who is resting on her deathbed already for a month now? We're just waiting for her to die. 
ונלו הרופאים למצוא לה מזור לרפואתה, and the doctors have given up on helping her. ונפשי קשורה בנפשה, but my soul is wound up in her soul. ובלעדה אין לי חיים, and without this daughter of mine I have no life. There's no reason for me to live. ואתה, now אם תתפללו להשם אלוהי אבותיכם, if you pray to the God of your fathers, שתחזור לאיתנה ותתרפא, and she'll return to her previous uh, health. והשם יקשיב ויאזין תפילת חייהם, and השם will listen to you. אמלא חפצכם ברצון, I will listen to your request. וגם אביע תודתי עליכם, and I'll even tell you thank you. So he puts them on the line. Let's try your gut. Remember that uh, scene in the Frisco kid? Yeah. Where he says, uh, My God cannot make rain. I can't. He can do everything except for make rain. And then all of a sudden, it starts raining. He's like, And just like that, my God can change his mind. You know, it's a, yeah. the, this is a, he's putting him on the spot. Really, we don't do such things like this. And you have to ask us, how could they do this? How could they even put themselves in a situation where they might promise something that is not, uh, that is not, they, they can't promise if Hashem is going to listen. I saw some of Hashem write that in these situations, there are people's lives at stake. And it's almost like, even though we can't force Hashem's hand, but... In order to protect Am Yisrael, Hashem allows people who don't believe in Him to force Hashem's hand. Uh, because if the, the price we would pay for failing would be even worse. And so uh, it seems that there's not a situation they would have asked for. Like they would not have gone and said, Oh, you know, watch, we can even heal your daughter. They wouldn't do that, but they're in, put in the situation now. Vayom HaGaon, Lapidot, and the Rabbi Lapidot, he says, Havienu el cheder acholam, bring us to the sick girl's room. וביהם משם, they went in there, ויכנס הרב הצדיק, רבי נחם מרעולנה ליד מיטתה, and רבי נחם goes near her bed, ויפרוס כפיו אל השם בתפילה ובתחנים, and he spreads out his arms to השם in prayer. By the way, yeah, you ever see people pray like this? That used to be how Jews pray. When do we stop? When the Christians started doing it. I, I told you, reactionary Judaism. It's not an original Judaism. ואחר כך יצאו והלכו לדרכם, and then they left the room and they went on their way. לא עברו מספר ימים, it wasn't even a matter of days in the past, והנה הגיעה מרכבה הדורה לביתו של הגאון ראם לפידות. אלבריט צ'ריאט שואו דאפ את הדור של רבי לפידות. ונתבקש לבוא עם חברו הרב הצדיק מרונה אל הגנרל בביתו. And he said immediately he demands from him to come with רבי נחום to his house. He says, people get scared. Uh, the general summons you, you don't know what he's summoning you for. But it's also a classic for me. Chamoudi Yosef, in his one hand, is quoting from Syria, from uh, wherever, and then all of a sudden he gets into Hasidic stories. Like, this is something that, that uh, you would argue that there are very few people in the world who are as uh, versatile as him when it came to sources. Um, very rarely have I opened up a book of Hasidut, and I find, oh, look, they quoted Rabbi Bar Yosef. Uh, or even anyone from Syria or Egypt. It's, it's, but this is very special. He's, mm-hmm. he's not afraid to take from wherever he needs to take sources. Um, וישלח הגאון שליח להזמין את הרב הצדיק מרונה אליו, and so he sends a, a messenger to go quickly bring the Rebbe Nachum of Arona. ובואו עליו, ובואו, when he came, עלו יחדיו על המרכבה. They went up together onto the chariot. ויסעו לבית הגנרל, they go to the house of the general. ובבואם אליו קיבלה מכבוד רב ושמחה. When they reached him, he accepted, he welcomed them with the great joy and honor. והכניסם אל חדר ביטון, he brings them into the room of his daughter. והיא ראוה שהיא בריאה ומשחקת בצעצועים. And they see that she's healthy and playing with her toys. And the general tells them, Now I know for certain that your God is the true God. Who listens to the prayers of the sages of Israel. Immediately after you left here, her illness went away. ולאט לאט התאוששה וקמה לתחייה, and she literally got better and better and better and, and came back to life. והנה עיניכם רואות איך שהיא כבר בריאה, and your eyes now see how healthy she is. וידעתי, and I know for certain, כי רק תפילתכם הביאה לביתי מרפא בכנפיה. It was only your prayers that healed her, nothing else that we tried. למרות שכל הרופאים התייאשו ממנה, and even though all the doctors gave up on her, אני אסיר תודה לכם. I therefore am, uh, uh, I owe you a debt of gratitude. ומבטיחכם נאמנה ששחרר את היהודים בכל שבת ומועד. And I give you my word that it will always release the Jewish soldiers for every Shabbat and holiday. ואתן להם יחס טוב, and I will give them, uh, I'll treat them properly, 
ואוהד לשמור כשרות וכל צורכי היהדות, and on top of that, they didn't ask for this. It said, I'll allow them the opportunity to keep mitzvot and to even eat kosher food in this army. ויצאו משם בכבוד גדול, and they left there with a great honor. וליהודים הייתה אורה ושמחה וששון ועיקר. It quotes from the Megillat Esther, and the Jews had all kinds of blessings and light and happiness and joy. And then he says here, וראה עוד בספרי ענף עץ אבות. Go look into my book, Anaf Etz Avot, it's a commentary for Avot, where he's going to tell us something else. I brought that book along with me. I didn't think we have time for it, but if it's okay with you, he has one more story over there. Uh, it's a similar story to what we just read happened in uh, Europe, but it's a, the Sephardic version of the same story. Uh, I don't know the He writes here, this is not in your paper. There's a story that happened by the Rabbi Rabbi Eliyahu Mani. See that blue book with the red letters? Next to the brown book? Yeah, right there. Next to the brown book. Right there. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> this book is from Rabbi Eliyahu Mani. And um, Rabbi Eliyahu Mani was the rabbi, chief rabbi of Hebron and the rabbi of the Kabbalist Yeshiva in Israel. The Ben Ishchai, you'll see, oftentimes quotes Rabbi Eliyahu Mani. I said, I, read, I didn't know the answer, so I wrote a letter to Rabbi Eliyahu Mani, and Rabbi Eliyahu Mani wrote back to me. Um, if the Ben Ishchai is asking him yeah. questions, then you know who this <laughs> rabbi is. That's a whole different level of rabbi. Um, it's interesting, I bought this book, this specific volume, because of something I never saw in my life. Rabbi Eliyahu Mani lived at over 100 years ago, maybe 120 years ago. And in here, he has an entire book of his favorite Hasidic teachings. Oh, wow. You have to understand, this is before... We ever really met Hasidim in any Sephardic country. He's already quoting, he's an expert in Hasidic works, at least the ones that were alive at the time that he's around. Uh-huh. Um, he has uh, rabbis from Koretz, from Chernovitz, from uh, Kranz, from Eli Melech Shapira of Dinov, you might have heard of some of these rabbis. Wow. Um, uh, from Krakow, mm-hmm. he has uh, Eli Melech of Lezhensk. Mm-hmm. He has here a number of um, the Toldot Yosef, the Toldot Yaakov Yosef, the students of the Baal Shem Tov, and he has his favorite wow. teachings from their writings, which is again something that I found very unique. So he's going to tell us a story about him now. Masesh Hatzal Gaon Rabbi Yehuda Mani, there's a story about Rabbi Yehuda Mani. Av Bedin Chevron, he was the the head of the Bedin of Chevron. Shunasali Mitzrayim, he once traveled to Egypt. Bishnat Batzoret in a year of famine. The reason he goes to Egypt, from where? From Israel. להביא בר ולחם ומזון, to bring back food. לתושבי חברון, to the people who live in the חברון. ויתארח בביתו של השר, I don't know how to read this name properly, I'm going to just guess. His name is Katawi Facha. It's clearly uh, not a Jewish guy. שר האוצר במחוז מצרים, he was a treasurer of Egypt. והשר שהם הוקיר ורחים רבנן, and this שר, this uh, minister, he really liked rabbis. So it could be he was a Jew. I just don't think he was. Kibat Rabbi Bechavod Gadon. It could be he was a Jew. I don't know what to tell you. He, he greeted the rabbi with a lot of honor. He invited him to lunch. When they finished their lunch, he said, I'm sorry, but I have to run to go stand in front of the king. I have an appointment. He says, because at that moment they were opening up the auction. Well, they, it's a better word, and, and I think in legal term they call it a tender. They put out for tender the government uh, job of making clothes for the 50,000 soldiers. So mm-hmm. people were coming to bid on the right to work for the government. Is that mm-hmm. what they call it? Tender? Yeah, that's correct. And he also was going to go make a bid over there. And the rabbi blessed him, he should have success. Oh, sorry, I apologize. He was Jewish. And he asked this uh, uh, Katawi Facha, he tells him, please uh, just make sure you don't get so busy in your business that you you'll forget to pray Mincha. That the rabbis already told us, the person should always be careful to pray Mincha. Because Eliyahu Navi was only answered because he prayed at the time of Mincha. Mm-hmm. And the, this uh, minister of the king said, for sure I'm going to do that. 
והנה אחר דיון מקיף של המלך, and after this long uh, debate with the king, ויועצה וכל ההצעות שהוגשו במחז, and they're going through all the different offers they received at this auction, הביט השר בשעונו, the minister looks at his watch, ורק כי בעוד כמה רגעים תהיה השקיע, he knows in a few minutes is going to be sunset. ואם ימתין עד שיגיע תורו לדבר על הצעתו, if he waits until his turn to give his offer, ייתכן שיפסיד את תפילת המנחה. He'll probably end up missing מנחה. התנצל בלחש חבריו, he whispered his friends, I'm sorry, וקם והלך לחדר אחר כדי להתפלל מנחה. And he got up to go to another room to pray מנחה. Something else I love about Rabbi Wadi Yosef. He's one of the more brilliant halachic minds that lived in the last few hundred years. But he's not afraid to tell a good story. Not just a story, but a good story. With details, whispering to his friends, getting up, looking at his watch. These are details that are not necessary. But he writes at the beginning of the book that if you don't know how to tell a good story, how do you expect people are going to listen to you? It's part of being a rabbi. It's having good skills to teach. I was recently somewhere and I heard the rabbi speaking. I was just mumbling. I don't know if anyone understood what he was saying. I don't know if he understood what he was saying. Like, you know, but it's, and it's not his fault. It's just a, sometimes... הקדוש ברוך הוא גיבש. חמור ונסף had this talent to tell stories. To tell stories and stories. ובעודו מתפלל נתקיים בו הפסוק And while he was praying, Hashem fulfilled in him the verse that said תרם יקראו ואני אענה. Before they even called out, I answered them. עוד הם מדברים ואני אשמע. They're still talking and I hear him. והשם יתברך להזין את תפילתו. Hashem heard his מנחה prayer. כי היה בעל חסדים גדולים because this car, what did it call him? This Mr. Facha was, he did a lot of chesed for people. וטוב ומטיב לעמון, he was very kind to his nation, ונתן בלב המלך והשרים לזכות את השר הקטאווי במכרז. And therefore, Hashem gave it in the heart of the king and the ministers to let קטאווי win this auction. ביקש המלך לברכו, the king wanted to bless him, והנה איננו. He wanted to congratulate him, but he's not in the room. אמרו לו חבריו של השר, למלך שהוא יצא להתפלל. He said, you know, uh, dear your majesty, he, he had to go pray for a few seconds. המתינו לו עד שסיים תפילתו, they waited until he finished praying. וכשחזר למושב השרים, ברכו המלך על השכר במכרז. And the king uh, waited and blessed him, uh, congratulated him on his success, אשר על ידי כך הרוויח הון תועפות. And because of that he received numer... Uh, he became a very wealthy man. שאל אותו המלך, the king says, you know, I just have one question for you. ממתי נעשית כל כך צדיק וחכם? When did you become so righteous all of a sudden? לקום באמצע מושב השרים כדי להתפלל, I've never seen you leave one of our chamber meetings to go pray. כאילו, you know, all of a sudden you became so religious. סיפר לו השר, so the minister says, you know, כי בא אליי מארץ ישראל חכם גדול וצדיק, I have a guest in my house right now, he's waiting for me, a very righteous man from the land of Israel. והבטחתי לא להתפלל, and I promised him that I would pray. ולכן קמתי לקיים הבטחתי, and I got up because I'm a man of my word, and I wanted to fulfill my, uh, my promise. כשהלכו השרים, when all the ministers left, קרא המלך את השר קטאווי פחה. The king summons back uh, the minister קטאווי פחה. And he says, במיוחד. הוא ביקש ממנו לאמור, הוא אומר, I need to ask you something. יש לי בת חולה. I have a very sick daughter. השוכבת על ארז דווי זה כמה חודשים, who for the last few months she's been in hospice. They're just waiting for her to die. והזמנתי רופאים מומחים לרפואתה, and I brought the best doctors that money could afford to heal her. וכולם העלו חרס בידם, and all of them came up empty. אף בקשתי מאנשי דת השייחים הערבים להתפלל עבורה. I even asked all our Arab sheikhs from our faith to pray for her, והכל לא הועיל, and nothing has worked. אנא הזמן אליי את הרב שבא אליך. Please, invite this rabbi who's at your house to come to me. כדי שיברך אותה, and maybe he'll bless her, ואולי תעלה ארוכה למחלתה, and maybe he can cause some kind of divine mercy on my daughter. Just understand, this is the kind of story that you couldn't tell in the general. The general here is ready to cut off these rabbis' heads if they don't act nicely in front of him. Here you find the king who not only waited for the guy to finish praying Mircha, but he wants the rabbi to come and bless him. It's a different relationship. I mean, nobody's under the illusion that this king is a lover of the Jews, but it was a very different environment in this country. The minister agreed. And he asked the rabbi to come with him to the palace. להתפלל על ביתו של המלך to pray for the daughter of the king. הסכים הרב הצדיק, the rabbi agreed, ובבואו לפני המלך, when he came in front of the king, הכניסו לחדר של ביתו, and he brought him to his daughter's room. עמד הרב והתפלל לפני הקדוש ברוך הוא, שיקדש שמו בעולם. The rabbi stood up and he said, Hashem, please sanctify your name in the world. מקה קידוש השם. Show them that you listen to the תפילות of צדיקים. 
Bishlach washed the male bitosh la melech and send a healing to the daughter of the king. Vatfilash at Sadiq Roshavarikam and his prayer did not go unanswered. Bechavu Shloshayamim Kama Mutat Cholia and after three days she stood up from her bed. Vichlima Mukhalata and she became healthy again. Hamelech Samach Mao the king was very happy. Vizmin Shinit the Rab Lavola Ramono and he invited the rabbi again to his palace the second time. Mukhsheba when he came, he be a Hamelech to the Tola Rav, he gave him numerous thanks. Shehodot the Tfilato Nitrapa Bito is because of you, my daughter became healthy. Vishanoto. He says, tell me, why are you even in Egypt? If you're a rabbi from Israel, what are you doing here in Egypt? He told him, because there is no bread in this land. These are words that he's echoing from. From, from, the, from the brothers that are coming to Egypt. Because the famine is very strong in Israel. And he immediately commanded his servants to saddle up some donkeys and send sacks of food to the community in Hebron. And he gave the rabbi a lot of gold. And the rabbi money left not just a lot of food, but a lot of money for the residents of Hebron. And Hashem's name was sanctified because of the rabbi. And you know me. I rarely share so many miracle stories in one dose. It's not my style so much. Yeah, but it's important to know that really, really, tzaddikim are tzaddikim. And uh, we have real tzaddikim still left in this world. And a person has to think, imagine if I did a tefillah for somebody. So forget it. Maybe my tefillah might not come true. Yeah, I'm not a tzaddik. I'm not Rabbi Almani. I'm not Rabbi Nachum of Aronna or Rav Lepidot. But at the very least, for a person to say, wow, look, the Jews care about us. The Jews pray for us. I'm always worried when people go to visit sick people in the hospital. Are there any Jews here? And what if there are no Jews here? Please tell me that you'll stop and you'll still go visit some people in the hospital to go give them blessings also. They should also know that a rabbi comes. I, whenever I go to the hospital to visit somebody, and Baruch Hashem, I don't have to do it so often. I always try to stop in somebody else's room or sometimes there are rooms that are shared, so I go to the other person also to sit with them. You have to be smart because people are always worried about missionaries and are you trying to you know take my will over. So I was, you know, I'm just visiting someone and oh, I just wanted to know, hey, what's your name? Can I give you a blessing? And then walk away. Uh, today I was in Los Angeles and I had to get somewhere, so I took an Uber. And um, turns out my Uber driver was Jewish, a Persian man, and he looks at me and says, are you a rabbi? I said, yes. He said, why does God hate me so much? <laughs> no, so it was like, it was early in the morning. I was like, why does God hate me so much? And I said, why do you think God hates you? Well, for the last 26 years, my life has been miserable. Da, da, da. As I talked to him and I spoke to him, I was like, well, what can I do? Like, what, what, what am I supposed to tell? I don't know why you're, I don't know what's happening over here. Enjoy and then I said, would you mind telling me your Hebrew name and your father's Hebrew name? I said, yes. I gave him Misha Barach and I blessed him. He was so happy. He was so, uh, they wanted to take me for lunch. I was like, I really don't have time to go anywhere for uh, today. But I said, you know, at least, at least, I can let him think that, that I we care about each other, that we care about him. That was enough to, to make his day. That he got a bracha. So he thinks Hashem hates him, but the bracha he liked, he accepted it. It's very important. So, you know, in this entire tshuva, we didn't talk about what Zev mentioned, which was atheists. Um, people who would say that they don't believe in HaKadosh Baruch So the answer that I'll tell you, I don't have a good answer from this letter. But the Ramchal has a very interesting piece, which he says, you know what's a prayer about HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Not the Ramchal, I'm sorry. The Ramak, it'll be Moshe Korever, and it's Tom Dvorah. He says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes care of the people even who don't believe in Him. That's how great Hashem is. See, if you had a person who hated you and didn't care about you and all your whole life trying to make you mad, you, you think you would be there for them when they, something happened to them? So HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not petty like us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even the greatest evil person in the world, HaKadosh Baruch Hu cares about them. HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes care of them. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is very great and not very petty. And so if HaKadosh Baruch Hu could be that great, the Ramak says, so we also should be that great. So there should never be a Rasha that we curse, that we hate, there should be something that we pray that they should do tshuva. And so I think that uh, if anybody, you know, somebody once told Rabbi, a rabbi in Israel, and said, Rabbi, why should I bless the state of Israel when it does so many things that are bad? He says, well, if the state of Israel is doing so many things that are bad, then that's precisely why you should bless it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you ask the question because you think it's not deserving of a blessing. It's precisely because of that that you should bless it if that's how you feel. Yeah. And listen to the way Chamadi Yosef ends off this letter. And he says, when we close it from everything that I said above, says we also can now answer about the memorial prayer, the Ashkava that we say for this Jerusalem soldier. Shesam nafsho b'chapol again on Israel, who put literally his life on the line to protect the Jewish people. 
שבוודאי ראוי הוא לומר עליו השכבה אל נשמתו, Of course he is worthy and deserving of us to make a prayer for him that his soul should go higher in Shammai. כי לא יידח ממנו נידח. And he uses a verse that Hashem actually says about the Jewish people. But he uses it now about this Jewish soldier. Because there is no one that will ever be lost from Hashem. Hashem has a place for every person. For every being, for every creation. Hashem doesn't let anyone fall through the cracks. He takes care of every single creation in the world. And then he ends off his letter, V'yarbe ha-shalom ba'olam. And ultimately this will create and increase a lot of peace in the world. Is to be able to bless each other. And I think that this last sentence is worth the whole entire letter. Because I don't know. I don't know how souls work, and I don't know how Gan Eden works, and I don't know how Neshamot work, and I'm not sure how any of this works. What I can tell you though is when we care about each other, and we pray for each other, and when I say pray for each other, it's not like that Christian man on the plane who said, do you believe in Jesus? And I said, I believe he was a person. Said, no, that's not what I meant. Do you believe he was the Messiah? I said, no, absolutely not. That's why I'm Jewish, not a Christian. Uh, but you knew that before he asked me that question. He says, don't worry, brother, I'm going to pray for you. When he says, I'm going to pray for you, he means like, I'm going to make sure you don't go to hell. Like I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a patronizing prayer. That's not the prayer Chacham Vadeh Yosef is suggesting. It's a prayer of, you're a human being like I'm a human being. You share this earth with me like I share this earth with you. And therefore, I feel a responsibility to pray for you, to care for you, to hope the best for you. And what that ultimately will do is increase peace in the world. Mm -hmm. we're, we're so far away from living in this Jewish country club that so many Jews are insistent on perpetuating. There are a lot of people in the world that need us, that need Am Yisrael. They're not, they're not fighting anymore. They're not even trying to not be part of it. They just want to be people. People who believe in Hashem. People who in their innocence, in their purity, they really do believe in Hashem. They really do believe in Tfilot. They really do believe in the next world. They really do believe in a Mashiach. And all they're waiting for is a person from Am Yisrael to come and say, Listen, so I care about you. So you're a part of my people too. Yeah, we might pray a little differently. Yeah, we might look a little different. Yeah, we might eat a little different. So what? Who cares? I'm here for you. That doesn't take away from my Am yisrael -ness to pray for someone else. To the contrary. The Zohar and the Kuzari have a fight. One says that the Jewish people are the mind of the world, and the other says the Jewish people are the heart of the world. Uh, but either way, the, the point is the same. Both the brain and the heart are organs that could not survive without the rest of the body. It's not like a, a body of the world. We are the body of the world. We, can get away. we are the heart, or the very sensitive organs. You poke them the wrong way, Chaz Shalom, and everything is gone. Uh, but on the other hand, they provide life to the whole body. Uh, the heart and the brain pumps blood to the whole body. What does the heart get out of that? Nothing. It's not the point. The point is not to get anything back. It's to be the life source for the whole world. We don't want the arm to become the heart. We're not trying to get the whole world to be like us. But we need to give life to the whole world. What about the mind? You might think the mind only thinks things, but, you know, in the last uh, two years, I've watched my father recover from a stroke. And Baruch Hashem, Hashem has been very good. His kindness is everlasting. But you see that, that the slightest damage to one place in the brain, it literally, it stops a person from, it paralyzes a person. It can literally stop everything. And we're the same with Pu'e when I'm Israel. We're not here to take anybody, to mess with anybody, to bother anybody. Uh, what does the Rambam say? Loni The rabbis only hoped for Mashiach, so they could sit in the corner of the world and study Torah. All we ever wanted was to pray for the whole world, was to study for the whole world, was to take care of the whole world. That's all we ever asked. We never asked for world uh, dominion, domination. We never asked for for being the richest people. And we always just asked, leave us our little corner of the globe, so that we could take care of whoever needs help. That's all we ever asked for. And it's amazing that for thousands and thousands of years, the world has treated us like that dove that can never find a place to rest. Everywhere we go, it's always chased away by some other wave, by some other storm, by something else. We always hope for that day where the dove, and the dove is not the strongest bird in the world. We're not ravens, we're not hawks, we're not, we're just a little dove. But we're looking for that olive branch that a little dove can rest on so that we can do what we always wanted to do. The dove represents peace to bring peace to the world. That's what we all wanted to accomplish and that's what this whole tshuva is meant to accomplish. Start to think a little more if we don't pray for the Jewish soldier, who's going to pray for the Jewish soldier? If we don't pray for our parents that didn't come along the path of Judaism with us, who's going to pray for them? If we don't take the spiritual responsibility of the world in our own hands, who do you think is going to do it? The people who get drunk on New Year's? <laughs> I had a, a, a man that used to work in the yeshiva where I went to in Baltimore. And he was a very old um, uh, African-American gentleman who lived in a world where they didn't let him go to school. Oh. Very old man. Uh, racist America I mean, he, wasn't, he, didn't, he didn't know how to read or write 
that once I was with somebody and they wished him, hey, uh, happy New Year's, what are you going to go do tonight? Are you going to go drink a little bit? He said, no way. He said, I've been working at this yeshiva for 40 years or whatever it was. He said, I'm going to go home and put on some white clothing and pray with my children and my grandchildren and we're going to pray to Hashem for a beautiful New Year. I said, that's incredible that is. And nobody asked him to be Jewish. Nobody asked him to celebrate all Shana. But on January 1st, Instead of doing watching, half the Jews in the world are watching the ball drop in New York. What happened when the ball drop? What's going to be? Instead, we it's have so the opportunity. Important. It's very important, right? Without it, the new year wouldn't start. Instead of that, we have the opportunity to teach the world, Chem, it's a new year for you. It's a new year for the whole world. Let's pray together. Let's create, let's care enough to create a positive world together, to make a beautiful planet together. That's what our job is. That's our purpose. And Bezat Hashem, I pray for the Neshama of Eli, of Eliezer ben Avam. Mm-hmm. A dear friend who I know didn't leave us. He's here sitting in Kolo with us too. Uh, he went to the Yeshiva Shemana. We're the lower Yeshiva and he's in the higher Yeshiva. And um, all I ask is that when he's up there learning the Kodesh Bechu that he thinks about us, he thinks about the whole world, and he keeps smiling up there to give everyone up there a good mood so that Hashem gets in a good mood and takes us out of this galut once and for all mm-hmm. so we can go back all smiling and happy to you. Thank you for coming and learning today. Thank you. Thank you. I don't actually know how this ends.